What's going on guys, Riggs here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Appreciate you hanging out with me. And we're gonna be doing something a little bit different uh, than we do in a lot of the other videos. And I want you guys to let me know what you think down in the comment section throughout this video. What we're doing is we're talking about engagements. And we're not only talking about the good engagements, the 9,000 IQ plays, the you know 35 you know games and all these things. We're gonna be showing you good engagements, but we're also gonna be showing you bad engagements, some stupid decisions, some dumb plays, some dumb moves, but with bad engagements and with making mistakes, you can improve, you can learn from those mistakes. And that's often how you're gonna continue to improve in the game and get better is by learning from the mistakes that you make. So again, doing something a little bit different uh, and I really hope you guys enjoy the content. Understand all the gameplay you guys are about to see is crown, ace, and conquer, um, conquer tier gameplay. So just be prepared you guys. Hopefully you enjoy it. Let's get right into it. All right, guys, so what we're gonna start with first is bad engagements, and for each scene, I'm gonna do my best to explain to you the situation of what's going on, and also explain what went wrong and how we can learn from it. So we wanna make it to this compound. We just wiped a duo, and we had to make it back to this compound because we are not in the blue, Enemy so we wanna make it back to our truck, but we're the, this duo across the valley right here, or, or across the way, is gatekeeping us and they're preventing us from getting into the blue and it's 2v2 right now and every knock right now is completely crucial as you guys can see these guys can aim you can see that they completely blew up my helmet uh, but I think that was with an SKS pretty much one shot me down to about 20 HP so we know that th you know this is gonna be a tough match so Don gets a hit we go ahead and take out that guy who's actually prone this guy's gonna make a big mistake and peak from the from the from that tree and I also notice he had a level 2 helmet on M24 versus level 2 helmet you're done notice what this duo did they took out our tires in case you guys missed it go ahead and rewind they took out both of our tires and uh, we we're in a situation where we have no meds we had no meds we had to make it we had to run through the blue notice these guys right here they're fighting someone else they're not fighting us i made a mistake and i i peaked and Notice the blues coming. We're, we're, we're well out of zone. And like I said, I have zero meds. So look what just happened. Now I have no way to heal up. And <laughs> we basically have to straight up run for our lives. So the best tip that I want to give you guys from this scenario is uh, to understand when to engage and when not to engage. In this situation or in this engagement, these guys had the advantage. Not only did they have the high ground, they were in zone, we were out of zone. Luckily, we were able to pick up another truck. Uh, but like I said, luckily I have full boost. But other than that, there is no way that we'd be able to take these guys on. And you can see my vest is completely gone. So basically, no health, no armor, uh, peeking these guys. It's just, it was just not a good situation. So what you guys are gonna see now, as far as positioning, this could have gone way differently. We should have not engaged uh, these guys right here that were approaching us. Not only did they have a vehicle and we were on foot, but we were already in zone. My partner uh, decided to engage um, to en engage this other squad that was coming up, and we're already deep in game. There's only 19 alive, and he's going to get knocked right now, and we have no cover. As you guys can see, they have a vehicle down there, and I'm going to try to get the res. Notice I only have 25 HP, uh, this guy's, I wasn't sure if he had a, a nade or a molly in his hand, but he ended up having a molly, beautiful molly by him. Like I said, these are some really, really good plays from the opposition, but it was a completely horrible engagement. Now, sometimes not only are the engagements completely terrible, but the zones themselves can just screw you so hard. We, we have to get in the zone. Luckily, I had a couple smokes. Look at, can you guys believe this? Like, take a picture of this. Riggs is freaking snaking. And it's not by choice, it's not by choice. It's almost because you have to in some of these freaking circles on Erangel 
and on Sardock where you don't you don't have a choice. If you stand up right now, you are literally dead. And that's why some people talk about you know, all the tactics and things like that. But I'm doing this not by choice, you guys. It's the freaking zones. We're in the wheat fields on Arango right now. And we notice we get a couple, we get a couple hit markers right there. We don't get a knock though. And he ends up throwing a nade. He frags the hell out of us, frags us again. So sometimes there, it's things are out of your control with some of these zones. And it was a beautiful game. It was a 10 kill game. It was absolutely fantastic. Now, we're saving the best for last, you guys, right now on bad engagements. That was actually a really good engagement. Notice that the blue is right behind us. I think the blue actually is going to finish off that guy. I mean, we are at the very, very, we're at the end game, no pun intended. We are in the end game right now. Now, notice it's a 2v1 situation. And if you look on the mini map, this, what this is going to teach you guys is patience. Too often, it's very, very difficult, but you need to have patience in some of these final circles. Notice again, we have zone, we have hardcover, we have these crates, right? The dude throws a nade, this guy, again, in all these games, the, all these guys know how to play, they know what they're doing. So I, I decided I wanted to be the hero. And I said, you know what? He's on the backside of this little mound right here. I'm gonna flank him. I got my Groza, I got the hollow, I'm ready. So I thought he was gonna be up a little higher. He wasn't, he was a little bit below that mound. And he ends up knocking me. And I thought I was gonna be able to crawl up through these crates, but he ends up finishing me. But the difference here, you guys, is we had zone. I did not have to go out and chase him. He could have easily, easily just come to us now it's a 1v1 situation with my boy Devastator. And now he's inside the warehouse. But the fact that we had zone and the fact that this guy didn't, we could have easily just waited him out, uh, just done a little bit of gatekeeping. Notice he goes ahead and throws the molly. Uh, basically to distract, it doesn't actually make contact. And he ends up flanking Devastator, taking him out. Horrible, horrible engagement. A 2v1, we should have easily been able to take that, where we could have just either bum rushed him. I tried to be the hero and it just did not work out. You need to learn to have patience in some of these situations in these final circles. So now we're gonna be checking out the good engagements. Uh, we did get one knock after they knocked my buddy Guad out of the vehicle. They're gonna go ahead and revive way out in the open. Not exactly sure what was going on there. <clears throat> what you guys are about to witness though is a shot of a lifetime so i'll kind of explain to you guys the scenario and what is going on so we have one knocked we also have two of their guys knocked and notice i went ahead and flanked around so so just 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 watch this watch this so i get about 15 hit markers with the uzi i don't get the knock though so what do we do we bust out the freaking winchester you guys we get another knock so now we have three of their guys knocked and at this point i'm feeling good so I said, you know what? I'm just gonna rush him. Uh, I just had the most, I had the freaking shot of a lifetime. We're gonna go ahead and rush. You can see Guad has now been picked up and he's on the left-hand side. Check this out, one hit marker, two hit markers. Notice Guad's flanking around and he goes ahead and gets the wipe. Squad down, now we can loot up. It was a beautiful engagement. Went ahead and pushed those knocks as, as opposed to giving them time to go ahead and revive. Now we can loot up and our game continues. So now I'll give you guys another example of how crucial it is to push these knocks and just to have a really, really solid engagement. So we're here in probably my favorite spot on Erangel at this point, guys. I, I love Razak. I'm not afraid to admit it. So you see these guys, we're actually doing a little bit of third partying right now. These guys were actually fighting some other dudes that were right across the street. So we go ahead and get one knock with the VSS. Now I can see his partner, he's just gonna be kind of, he's trying to figure out where exactly that came from because it was the VSS. Now we have two knocked. So now what we're gonna do, me and Donnie, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna push this. Remember you guys, you have 10 seconds to get a revive off and then another seven seconds for them to get a heal off. So by now their guy is picked up, but nowhere near does he have the health um, that he'd want to have in this situation. So we go ahead, we frag out, and get a crucial knock right there with the frag. And these are some more tryhards. They got some letters and symbols in their names I don't even understand. 
Now, it's always important to push with somebody. When you guys are doing these engagements, we go ahead and get the thirst. Notice you always wanna push with somebody. I'm gonna make a really stupid play right now though. I saw his foot and check this out. Why I'm in the doorway and I go ahead and reload. I think I thought he was gonna be on the roof going around, but we get a couple shots on him and then notice Donnie was right there behind me to go ahead and take him out. All in all, it was a beautiful engagement squad down. All right, so check this out, you guys. Now I'm gonna show you guys how important it is in these in the mid to late games, how crucial it is to clear a building with a partner or with your teammate. So we pull up to this building, didn't hear a sound. Check this out. Look at this guy, did not make a sound, did not make a peep. You can hear a pin drop inside that building. Always clear these buildings with somebody. If that guy knocked me, he would have thirsted me immediately. Thank God our RL Abyss was right behind me to get the wipe and we go ahead and we get to continue our game. All right, so now I'm gonna give you guys another example of how crucial it is to have position and how to push these knocks. Now we have an AWM, so right off the bat, we already have an uh, uh, unfair advantage right here. So we get one knock. Notice, with each knock, we're going to push a little bit closer. Time and time again, I'll play games with other people, or even in our situations, where say someone in our team gets knocked, and we're expecting to get pushed, and we don't. It's just a knocking fight, and it doesn't. to me, it just doesn't make much sense. If you're able to get a knock, you should be able to progress a few steps closer. So we got one knock now at the bottom of the hill. Now we got another knock from a guy in an, uh, the other warehouse, just right across the way. So now we can definitely start getting uh, much closer than what we were before. Think about how far we were to start out. Now what I'm doing right now is I'm just taking out these guys' bike and I'm already calling the guys over. Hey, come on, you know, we got, we got two knocked right here. So we're probably gonna be taking on a full squad. At least there's gonna be at least three guys in this squad. So as you guys see on the mini map, the reinforcements are arriving. And of course I took out the motorcycle and of course they also had a buggy. So now what we're gonna do, this guy thought he was gonna flank around and he's freaking jumped out of the warehouse and he was proned out. I have no, I have no idea what that tryhard was thinking, but we go ahead and took him out. Scout goes ahead uh, and gets a kill. So now these guys are in trouble. Think about how far this, en this engagement started at about 200 meters away. Now we're inside the building. So at this point, at this point, these guys are basically shitting bricks. This guy just ran up the stairs. And now he's on the second floor of this barn right here. And we're just trying to, we're just trying to figure out their exact location. If they're on our right hand side or our left hand side, you can see he's right behind this pallet of boxes right here. So we just can't quite get an angle yet. So we're just basically gonna try to reposition and see where they're gonna go ahead and end up. And what we're gonna do is I'm telling him, okay, we're gonna push this together. So he goes up the stairs. He's gonna go ahead and get one knock. And now I'm behind this pallet. You can see there's a guy in that middle right there. We go ahead, we get ADS with that 2X. A Groza yet again, getting the white squad down, you guys, pushing from 200 meters away, always taking advantage of these knocks whenever you can. All right, so in this engagement, we're gonna look at an incredible engagement uh you're gonna see this is a 4v4 v4 situation helmets are getting blown off vests are getting chewed up here's this other squad a squad of four there's so many people they're fighting the guys in the mountains <laughs> we have freaking uh bad link he's gonna go down and i'm also uh with preet preet is a freaking god at this game dude plays on the Asian server. He's uh, uh, he's from India, but he plays on NA with us. Absolutely love this dude. He's so aggressive. And you guys are gonna see it in this gameplay. So he's knocked right now. And we're gonna go ahead and smoke him out. So Bad Link throws a beautiful smoke. And then now I'm gonna go ahead and pick up Preet. So we were fighting guys off into the hills. Then that truck pulls up. A full squad of four hops out. I didn't even know who to focus on. I'm there's smokes, there's grenades, there's gunshots. We got it all right here in this final circle, you guys. Uh, <laughs> these games, this is why I push rank you guys to have games like this. Notice to my left, we do have some guys up in those hills. And notice I just threw another smoke. We're basically continuously creating a smoke screen. A smoke lasts about 45 seconds. The car just exploded, went ahead and took that out in case there's someone behind it. But check this out, this guy's gonna make a big mistake. Peeking from the 
back side of that wall. Uh, we got another dirty tryhard with symbols and characters and letters in his name you can't even read. So now it's time to push. We got one knocked. We still have a full squad up. We have one knocked. And we're going to go ahead and push this dude. Now, notice when he came out of the doorway, he did not see me. That dude was not expecting me to push. Now we have two knocked, three knocked now. And finally, with the wipe, you guys. I believe Preet uh, took out the last guy. So basically, just to sum everything up for you guys, the difference between bad engagements and good engagements, when you have a bad engagement, to learn what went wrong. What can you do to prevent that from happening again? And then taking a good engagement and also learning from that, taking from both and walking away a better player. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. And until the next video, this has been Riggs.